Extreme weather is sweeping over several parts of Africa. Just this week, temperatures hit 48.5 degrees Celsius in Mali, which is Africa's hottest ever day recorded in the month of April. The heat wave has killed more than 100 people. Over in the Horn of Africa, there's been heavy rain. In one incident in northern Kenya, a bus with more than 50 passengers was swept away in floodwaters. All of those on board managed to escape to safety. But further south, in Zambia, Malawi and Zimbabwe, they've all declared a state of disaster. The rains there having failed, drought has destroyed the harvests and aid agencies, saying 24 million people in the region face hunger and malnutrition. Scientists say these events are influenced by human-made climate change, but also by natural weather patterns like El Nino. Drought is a fact of life for many people in southern and eastern Africa. But El Nino events like the current one can make the problem much worse. Here's why. Although it occurs in the Pacific, El Nino affects the weather right across our planet. Usually, sea winds push warm water from the west coast of South America across the ocean towards Asia. But in El Nino years, the waters off the coast of South America and California heat up more than usual. That causes many rain clouds to form over this part of the ocean. Normally, the strong winds along the equator would push the warm surface water to the west, feeding rainfall in Asia and Africa. But in fall and winter of El Nino years, these winds are weaker than usual and often blow in the wrong direction, towards the east. That pushes the clouds inland, where they dump their rain in North, Central and South America. This has knock-on effects in the rest of the world, including Africa, causing droughts and floods because of the changing rain patterns. And let's talk about this with Beatrice Cristoforo from our Environment Department. Beatrice, uh, tell us more about El Nino and climate change. Um, so scientists are still researching and discussing if there is a connection between El Nino and climate change. Um, and there's no consensus yet, but there are some studies that suggest that climate change could be making El Nino events stronger already and that they will become even stronger in the future. And that's because when we burn fossil fuels, that releases greenhouse gases into the atmosphere uh, and that heats the atmosphere, but warm air holds more moisture. So when we have an El Nino event, which is already kind of dropping rain in places that are, there are usually dry, uh, there's even more, there could be even more rain falling because of climate change. Um, that doesn't mean that every El Nino event is influenced by climate change, but it makes a place uh, like Africa particularly vulnerable if they could be uh, intensified. Well, why is that? Why Africa? Um, there are two reasons. First of all, climate change um, doesn't affect all the world equally. And that's because climate change doesn't make extreme, it doesn't directly cause extreme weather, but it makes events that would have happened anyway uh, more common and more severe. So that means that a place where there is already drought, where there is already high temperatures, where there's already storms, uh, climate change is just likely making them likelier uh, and making them stronger. And then the other uh, aspect with many African countries is that um, it's a place where there's a lot of weather related uh, activities, economically speaking. So, for example, a lot of, uh, you know, the vast majority of rain-fed agriculture in the world is in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. And then there's also, you know, fishing, herding. And that means that when natural disaster strikes, um, it, you know, many communities are taking a massive financial hit if they're not losing their all of their livelihoods, like, completely. So what's Africa got to do? Uh, I mean, a big term there is saying Africa, but what's the continent got to do moving forward? Um, scientists have been speaking of a three-pronged approach. So there is uh, adaptation, which, for example, if we look at a place like Zimbabwe now, which is going through drought, uh, we can look at drought-resistant crops or fixing leaks in water pipes to make sure there is more water to uh, yeah, water the crops basically adapting to the world that is already marked by climate change. Um, in many places of Africa, finance is also very important. So in the last UN conferences on climate change, world leaders have you know, been discussing how to set up and manage a fund uh, where richer countries pay vulnerable countries uh, money that after they're hit by a natural disaster that they kind of get back on their feet quicker. But really what we really need to keep in mind is that we need to stop 
burning fossil fuels, or at least minimize how many fossil fuels we're burning, because, of course, we need to tackle the problem at the source. And really, the cruel part of all of this is that African people were the ones who contributed the least mm. to the climate crisis, and they're some of the ones feeling the worst impacts. So top emitters like the US, like China, like Germany, really have an international responsibility to make sure that everyone in the world is safe because climate change does no borders. But when you say we, you're talking about all countries. All countries, of course. Everyone needs to contribute, but top emitters are the ones who can make the biggest difference. Beatrice, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you.